Previously on... You are going up to a strange and hostile world. Stay in the shadows. Guys, look at that! Let go of me! You're getting away! The big guy was a robot and he had a freaky weird alien brain thing in his chest! One of the kidnappers will eventually show his face. And when he does, we'll make him tell us where they took them. Continuing where the previous episode left off, the turtles are standing by the crashed van wondering about the mutagen that they just found. Leo reasons that the kidnappers that they are after are somehow connected to their mutation 15 years ago. Mikey continues to insist that said kidnappers are alien robots, and he tries to prove it by pulling off the driver's face, but this proves futile, as the man, named Snake, is actually just an ordinary human. When the turtles interrogate Snake, with Raph threatening him with a vial of mutagen, they learn that he works for the Krong, who have been kidnapping scientists from all over the entire city and are planning to take all of them to an unspecified place located somewhere outside of the city. The turtles have Snake take them to one of the Krong's lairs, which is quite heavily guarded. As Leo, Raph, and Donnie argue about how to free the hostages, Mikey accidentally lets Snake escape. The turtles chase after him, but when Leo and Raph successfully find his hiding place, they decide to trick him instead of capture him. Leo then devises a fake plan, which he says is to use Snake's van to drive into the enemy headquarters, knowing that Snake can clearly hear him. The turtles then return to the lair to gear up. At the lair, while the other three turtles prepare for their mission, Leonardo asks Splinter why he chose him to be the leader. Splinter says that he must discover that on his own. Then, Leo voices his fears of failing to Splinter and asks how he is supports to know and find where his priorities truly lie. Splinter says that failure is a possibility that every single leader must only be prepared to face, and once again tells him the story of his own greatest failure, his final battle with his arch-rival, Orokasaki, which ended in the tragic losses of his wife, Tang Shen, and their child Miwa. However, in spite of all the losses that he had both suffered and endured, he is gratified to have gained four new sons. Later, Snake and the Krom are seen waiting for the turtles to show up. As Snake expected, the van comes speeding towards the building and explodes in a fiery crash. A canister of mutagen then flies out of the van and bursts open on Snake, causing him to mutate. Meanwhile, it is revealed that the turtles use the crash as a distraction so that they can sneak into the base unnoticed. Once inside, they find the place full of alien robots, proving that Mikey was correct all along. They fight their way through the enemy lair, until they find the detention cell where the girl, April, and her dad are trapped. Just as they get the doors open, more robots come in and carry the two off. The turtles give chase, but are stopped outside by the now monstrous snakeweed. Leo, Raph, and Mikey stay behind and fight him, along with even more robots, while Donnie goes to rescue April and her dad, who are being taken into a helicopter. Donnie grabs onto the helicopter as it takes off. While he struggles with a krong, April falls out. He has to let go of the aircraft to save her. Allowing the krong to successfully escape with her father, they go back to join the other turtles, where Leo has come up with another plan to both outsmart the robots and defeat Snakeweed. They taunt the Krong into shooting at a power generator, and an explosion then occurs, which both obliterates Snakeweed and covers our hero's escape. As a result, the Krong now declare the Turtles their enemies. The Turtles take April to her aunt's apartment, and vow not to rest until they have found and rescued her father. Back at the lair, Splinter commends Leo for his success. Leo thinks that he understands why Splinter chose him to be the leader now, saying that he sensed in him a true warrior's spirit that would forge them all into the heroes they are destined to become. Splinter, however, says that the real reason was simply that Leo asked first to be the leader, 
He would have picked any one of them if they asked first, though probably not Mikey. Then Mikey interrupts, saying that they made the news. The anchorman on TV reports that there are ninjas living in New York after police found one of their shurikens. Splinter then warns his students to exercise much more caution in the future, as one of the ninja's most powerful weapons is remaining a mystery, not be spotted in the light. Raf dismisses his warning, however, asking out loud what could possibly happen. Meanwhile, in of Tokyo, a man is apparently watching this very same news report, and he immediately recognizes the symbol on the shuriken that is seen. Thus, he correctly believes that Hamato Yoshi is still alive and now training a ninja army of his own in New York City. He then tells one of his armed men to prepare his private jet. Afterward, he stands up and dons his helmet, and we learn that the man is Orokasaki, an old enemy of Hamato Yoshi from Japan in 15 years ago. As a result of knowing that Hamato Yoshi is alive and glaring menacingly at the camera, he decides that it's time to pay a visit to a friend. After residents reported a disturbance, the pol- After res- the- My old dish when I see- Visit him.